In the previous video, we covered the first pillar of healthy trumpet playing, keeping your air forward while you play the trumpet. In this video, we're gonna cover the next pillar of healthy trumpet playing, which is producing a sound that is in the center of the pitch. Lacking this pillar in your trumpet playing can cause a few different problems. The first is that if you're not in the center of the pitch, you're never really going to be able to produce your fullest and most colorful sound that you can. You might have a nice and pretty sound, and it might even be an attractive sound, but without being in the center of the pitch, you're never gonna have quite as much depth as you could when you're in the center. Another issue you might run into if you're not in the center of the pitch is as you ascend into the upper register, the slots get smaller and smaller because you're a little high on the pitch or something like that, and it becomes much harder to play with ease and flow in the upper register. My goal for this video will be to share what it sounds like when a player is not in the center of the pitch, to share an exercise I use to help people find the center of the pitch and then I want to talk a little bit about why playing in the center of the pitch and playing in tune are not the same thing. To begin I'd like to demonstrate what it sounds like to be just a little high on the pitch. This is by far the most common trumpet sound I hear and I've even heard really great trumpet players that have beautiful sounds that are still just a little bit high on the pitch. I'm gonna share a few different examples, one kind of extreme and one that's a little bit closer to acceptable, I guess. The extreme example, you're gonna clearly hear that the sound is pinched, it's tight, there's no body to the sound. And in the example that's closer to acceptable, you'll hear it's a nice sound. It definitely could pass, but it's not as full as it could be. Now I'm gonna demonstrate what it sounds like when someone is under the pitch. This is not as common. I'm not actually sure if I've even heard somebody sound like what I'm about to demonstrate, but for the sake of science and covering all of our bases, we're gonna do it. As you can hear in these examples, the sound has some beef to it. There's some body to it, but it lacks all sparkle and it just sounds dull and flat and lifeless. In general, thinking of a sound that is a little bit high on the pitch as having some sparkle but no body, and a sound being low on the pitch having body but no sparkle is a pretty good way to think of it. And so I think you could imagine that if you're right in the center of the pitch, you're gonna get the best of both worlds, a full colorful sound that has a lot of sparkle to it. To find this sound, I like to use this exercise where you are going to bend a note within a G. You're not gonna try to get up to G sharp and you're not gonna bend down into F sharp. Everything is gonna stay within what would be considered a G. To do this exercise, you're going to start on a G and you're gonna push the sound a little bit sharp. And then as you do it, you're going to use your energized air and your aperture to aim the air and bend the note a little bit lower and a little bit lower. You should hear the sound get a little bit better as you do it. And then at a certain point, the sound is gonna get worse again. You're gonna get into that full but lifeless sound when it's flat. Then you just wanna come up just a little bit and where you land, the room should open up, the sound should be better immediately, and you basically will be in the center of the pitch. Like I just said, you really wanna use your energized air and your focused aperture to aim the air and to find the bent note. You don't wanna manipulate by dropping your jaw or changing anything in that way. The goal of this exercise is essentially to learn where to aim your air to be in the center of the pitch. And once you find it, it shouldn't be uncomfortable to produce this pitch. To transfer this into your playing, you wanna do the exercise, you wanna do the bending, and you wanna find the center of the pitch, and then begin to start to memorize that sound. What qualities does it have? How does it feel to produce it? How would you describe it with a word or some words? Or just in general, what does it sound like? 
And then you wanna maybe do the bending exercise and then take a small little break and then see, can I create that sound without the bending exercise? Can I get right in the center of the sound? This is how you're gonna transfer from this drill that helps you find the center to being able to create it all the time and getting it as a part of your mental representation or the sound you hear in your head. To finish this video, I'd quickly like to discuss why playing in the center of the pitch is not the same thing as playing in tune. It is very possible to play in tune according to a tuner and to not be in the center of the pitch. In fact, you see this a lot with players who play a little bit high or maybe a lot high on the pitch and they have to compensate by pulling their tuning slide all the way out or pretty far out at least. And so you get it in tune according to a tuner, but it doesn't have that fullness. It doesn't have that depth of sound we're looking for. The reason this pillar is important is because it's less about playing in tune and it's more about producing the most colorful and a sound with the most depth that you can. Here's a couple demonstrations to help make this point. At this point, you should know what a sound that is above, below, and in the center of the pitch sounds like. You should understand how to produce a centered sound for yourself. You should also know what the difference between playing in tune and playing in the center of the pitch is. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did find value in this video, I would appreciate it if you liked it and if you subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.